it's why it's doing that. Thank you. 
bring the utility patch. You are just struggling with the whole idea. Perhaps that will just help you see the beauty of God. So let us pray. Each and everything we have received from, from God, God to heaven. Each and everything we enjoy from God, God to us. Each and everything we pray for from God, God to heaven. Right, I'm going to be great. But first, create in 
time forever, both in your temple and your world, set on fire with your eternal life, even your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. Amen. And now Dennis is coming to read the scripture. The reading is taken from the book of Revelation of St. John the Divine. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. And I speak to God.
Our Gospel reading this morning is taken from John. Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the King of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you to do? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Just a word of prayer to you. At this point in our service, widen our thoughts, stir our emotions, and strengthen our will. In Jesus' name. One of the loveliest stories concerning our reign of Queen Victoria is of the day when Handel's Hallelujah Chorus was first given in the Albert Hall. There in the box sat the young queen, and a lady in waiting came to her and said, Madam, when the Hallelujah Chorus is sung, the author in the audience will rise, but it is the correct etiquette for your majesty to remain seated. But, but, when the vast choir reached the words King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the young queen rose in her box and stood with downcast eyes for the remainder of that triumphant piece of music. What a contrast to that grotesque cross long ago and far away. Every passerby could read in Hebrew the language of religion, or Latin the language of law and government, or in Greek the language of culture. Christ declared King of the Jews in them all. And very, early, very soon those words used as a taunt became precious to his followers. Both Paul and John, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. And on this Sunday of Christ the King, over a century from Queen Victoria's homage, let's consider three things. Firstly, three questions. Where is this King? Where is this uh, king? Some might say it's all very well to sing hymns like and worship the king or, or the king of love or crown him as thy chosen king. But can the word king really be used in any true sense? We can imagine a cynic unimpressed dwelling upon some evil's curse on our civilization, or some of the horror that darkens community life, such as child abuse, particularly that which happens in the church, domestic violence, drug and knife-related crime. And our cynic says, these situations flatly deny a king of love. You and I might very easily join the cynics chorus. It's one thing to sing on a Sunday morning, rejoice, the Lord is King. But where is this King? Look how many things apparently flaunt his regal authority. Where is this King? That's our first point. And the second is, in what sense does he reign? In what sense 
just who they are. A word from the anonymous writer to the Hebrews is relevant here. Quotes, we see not yet, not yet, all things subjected to him, but we behold him crowned with glory and honour. Or as one of the translations puts it more simply, at present we do not see everything subjected to him. As though the writer is trying to say there are places in his dominion where not all is according to his will. But this does not deny the fact that he reigns. And Paul echoes that again and again. He must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. He must reign. Not because he could re release omnipotent power that could not be resisted, but he must reign because right must triumph in the air. And when applied courageously, Christianity wins. Love may seem to be denied by cruelty. Kindness may just seem feeble. But in the end, royal values will win. He must reign. He must reign because developing humankind will honour royal values and give them place they deserve in life and experience their inherent power. That is the sense in which he reigns. Where is the king? In what sense does he reign? What power has he got? Is our third point. What power has he got? Two things. Firstly, a great truth. If we are dismayed and if we are alarmed, it's helpful to remind ourselves that behind all the powers in this world, behind presidents, prime ministers, political parties, pandemics, above all the turbulence in our world stands our unchangeable, eternal, almighty King. His power, his authority, never suffers a crisis at the ballot box. And ultimately it's Jesus who rules. And those in power are responsible to him, whether they acknowledge it or not. Let that be a great truth that both comforts us. Let that be a great truth which challenges us. A great truth. And secondly, there's a great practice. So instead of insisting only on God's great truth, let's remember his closeness, his imminence. He is with us. He will walk with us. He is able to work out whatever needs to happen now. Mother Teresa um, wrote in uh, one of her um, books, we have it in our power, in our power, to be in heaven with him right now. In other words, it is our power to be part of his power. Now, it is our power to be part of his power. Now, by our daily submission, by our loyalty, by the things that Angela was hinting about when she talked about the kingdom of God, you and I can help the king, the swordless king, come into his own and become part of the power that he's got. We can, you and I, hasten the fulfillment of the ancient prophecy, the kingdoms of this world shall become, shall become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and forever. Two questions this morning for us. To what extent do you and I think of Jesus as King? 
more than any of the other over 200 titles that he has. To what extent do you and I think of Jesus as king more than any of his other titles? <coughs> and secondly, to what extent do you and I think of being part of the power that he's got? To what extent do you and I think of being part of the power that he's got? Finally this. Born in 1836, the daughter of a caddy became a gifted, popular hymn writer. And when she was 15, old, 15 years old, she wrote in her uh, journal, I consecrated my soul to the Saviour, and earth and heaven seemed brighter from that moment. And few poets have consecrated their gifts of heart and head and pen more fully to Christ than she did. And few lives ending at 43 have left behind such treasured hymns. You and I know Francis Riddle, Ridley Haragol as the author of Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated. And Francis wrote something for yours and my mind to echo. Reign over me, Lord Jesus. O oh, make my heart thy home, <coughs> thy throne, <coughs> thy throne. Amen.
Pray for those who are currently receiving treatment, for all who are recovering from illness at home. And remember too, all those who are struggling with mental health problems. In a moment of silence, we bring to the Lord anyone who is especially on our heart at the moment. Thank you. 
stand for the acclamations. The Lord God Almighty is our Father. He loves us and tenderly cares for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Saviour. He has redeemed us and will defend us to the end. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, is among us. He will lead us in God's holy way. To God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory today and forever. Amen. So we come to our final hymn this morning. If you're using the hymn book number 489. <coughs>
the lieutenant. Evening prayer this evening has been cancelled due to the weather, and I've been told it will start again in March. Now, as um, Jackie was praying for, we've got the gift of St. John's and the Angel Festival taking place next weekend. Now, at the back of the church, there are two lots of pamphlets here. Please take them, put them through letterboxes so that people everywhere know what's going on here at St. John's. And as many of you as can, please come. Please come and help if you're asked when you arrive. And if any of you would like to donate some money towards this, then please see Rosie at the end of the service. <coughs> And the exciting news is our tree is going to go up at the end of the service. So if anyone's around who could help to decorate it or get it in place, it would be lovely. It's laying on the floor here, it's quite large. So with some help would be very much appreciated. And now let us ask God's blessing. May God give us his comfort and his peace his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and every one of those we meet today. Amen. Amen. Please do come and enjoy some fellowship and coffee in the hall.